there's some more new stuff we got too. Um, we were going to talk about the uh, multi-channel. And this is handy in a couple of different ways. Um, so really what this is, this multi-channel, this changes your view options. And let me demonstrate. Here is some backgrounds. <clears throat> Here's a 7-1 background from Suicide Squad. And we're not gonna, I'm not going to make any changes to this, but if we wanted to have to do something, go in there, trim out some noise, a problem, any clicks, what they've done now is give you a view like this. So, you've got this little uh, button over here now that can change your view. You can go the composite view, what we're seeing here, or the individual tracks. You can solo these individual tracks like such, turn them all back on. Right? And then if you had to go and do something within here, there it is. You can, if, if you needed to affect just one portion of the sound, of course you can do that. This I can really imagine having a lot of use. There's these um, sound field recorders we've been using quite a bit. So multi-channel recorders. And I know I was just telling a, a good friend of mine whose job is to master all of these sound effects from the field recordings. And when I told him about this, he was very excited. <laughs> because this will, right there, save him quite a bit of time. Um, there's always things that have to be done besides the naming of it. He's got to clear out the cars or the air conditioners or whatever uh, other nonsense that we've inadvertently recorded in there. So that is a handy thing. Now this is what it looks like. Here was another use of this multi-channel. I was on a, a battleship in, <clears throat> in London to record for field recording on Dunkirk. And it was um, really great. We got to go out and get a bunch of loop group guys, about a dozen of them and a couple of recordists to go out and we had access to a battleship uh, that's docked in the River Thames near the Tower Bridge. We uh, had, it's a museum during the day and we had run of it at night and we knew we had the opportunity to do this and very excited. We had them also wear period appropriate footwear because we knew besides the yelling and screaming we wanted them running around and no sneaker squeaks or anything like that. Um, we were at various decks, we were outside down below. Uh, one issue that we were uh, having in, in certain locations was some very modern sounding beeping going on, which occasionally could not be turned off. I think these were part of some safety equipment. And uh, so we had to uh, we'd line up all of this. Now, this would have been way easier because I was doing this you know, a year or so ago. Uh, now, this is how it's going to come out. And perhaps you've seen this. But so it opens up. All of them open up into tabs. Here's each of the different uh, channels. Some of them the beeping is more present because we were recording on so many channels we would have, we were trying to get all the perspectives at once. So we had uh, stereo mics close by and more at a distance and then at a greater distance. So anyway, this was one thing that um, 
we had to do for all of these was to go through and clean out beeps and occasional modern sirens and things like that. So you can, this would mean we'd affect just one track at a time, but with this up here, you see that guy there, will now collapse into a composite view. And from there, you can see that the, those are the beeps right there. And from these guys, I would probably use the spectral repair, and we could do them both at once. Go in here. I would say on these, I would go with the I don't know if you guys know this trick, um, but for the longer sounds, the higher number of bands here is key. And for short, sharp sounds, the lowest number of bands tends to work best in my experience. So in this case, uh, we'll try with that. And send back. There they are back. Thank you, RX. Like, 